Right, welcome to this Codex review for Blood Angels. Uh, Games Workshop have sent me a copy along, uh, and so I'm going to review it here in this video. So it'll be a review, uh, and then Tactica as well, and then I'm going to take particular interest in this one because I'm currently painting up some new units uh, for a revamped 8th edition Blood Angels list. Very excited about it. I think it has a nice strong theme to it. Blood Angels, I shifted them over to 8th edition, uh, my current army, and they're sort of a bit disjointed. Um, and units that used to be really really good sort of struggling so trying to adapt and create uh, a nice fluffy list for the blood angels uh, one that performs well and so the codex has come along now i've been waiting for this to arrive so in this video i'm just going to run through the whole codex that'll be a full review uh, and then uh, we'll talk about unit build, unit strategy as well as we go for each of the units then we've got all traits and stratagems and so on to cover uh, in this Book as well. Very exciting times now for Blood Angels players. They um, a lot have been waiting for. Uh, a lot of the different factions have been improved, and then for Blood Angels have been desperately needing some improvements, some points reductions as well, uh, and just to make them a bit more mean. Hopefully that's the case here with this uh, codex here that will give them a fighting chance and put them on the same level as the other factions. We'll have to see. We'll check out this review here in this video, uh, and then Tactica as well, uh, and then I've got mine from. Uh, Games Workshop, you can get it from uh, gamingfigures.com, that's where I usually go to to get codexes uh, and models and so on from, so you can check them out, it's gamingfigures.com, uh, they uh, sell Games Workshop products and also uh, different gaming systems uh, as well, all at a discounted rate. So, uh, Blood Angels, a showcase army, uh, really, there's some fantastic miniatures that they have, you'll see them coming up here in the book, if you're thinking of collecting Blood Angels then uh, it's sort of more of an elite army, smaller army but beautifully crafted miniatures, always been a big fan, love the colour scheme, the gold and the red and the black, just great colours uh, to work with. So there's a painting tutorial for the Blood Angels on the channel here uh, so you can check that out uh, and then get an idea of how to paint the miniatures up. If you like the way they're painted up in the different battle reports then on the regular channel here is the painting tutorial and you can check that out and just follow along from start to finish how to reach the same standard that you see in the video. So, usual artwork here, very nice and beautifully produced. Good to see the codex is back for the Blood Angels. Usually, these point these out nice, gives you an idea of a colour scheme, colour palette to work with. That's the kind of colours you can expect to use for the Blood Angels. So, fantastic units. We're just hoping now that the stratagems add and those kind of improvements there have, have helped out. Uh, the Blood Angels here just to lift them just that bit more. They have been struggling, they've been expensive as well, so hopefully that's all been corrected here uh, in the books. Some new artwork here featuring the Primaris Marines. Do like the look of the Reavers painted up for Blood Angels. They do look cool. Very nice. Just going through the artwork here in the background story Cradle of An Angels, Heritage of Sanguinius. Ordering the Host. Blood Angels heraldry, very very helpful, all of your shoulder markings here, uh, knee pads, uh, different ranks and so on, markings for tanks also, all nicely laid out for you, it's very helpful as a painting reference. You don't have to go for regular Blood Angels, you can go for any of these uh, chapters here that are associated with them. I always like the look of, where are they, blood drinkers with the golden trim, always look quite nice. Flesh Terror colour scheme here as well, pretty cool. And car Carmine Blades look nice. And Chronicle of Heroes, just a timeline here. Another great piece of artwork, Blood Angels versus Orcs. Absolute classic battle. And then your different uh, character says Dante, the Sanguinage, the current leader of the, the list at the moment for me, Sanguinary Guard. So let's see, like unique units Four Blood Angels, and ones that look fantastic. The Plastic Sanguinary Guard look absolutely amazing. They should, I know he's not too old a miniature, but they should redo him. And especially him should be redone in plastic. They'd sell well, I'm sure they'd sell well if they redid those. Sanguinary Priest, the plastic model, fantastic, really, really nice one. Bravo Corbelo. I've heard people saying you can use uh, him as him, but maybe you should have his own sculpt, librarians, Mephiston, chaplains, 
Astra the Grim. Do have him. Lamartes, you're on to Def Company, a regular Def Company there. Commanders, Gabriel Seth. Company Command, Captain Tycho. Battle Line Squads, regular tactical squads. Close Support Squads, Zero Assault Squads and Interceptors. Bikes and so on. Fire Support with the famous blue helmets for the Devastators and heavier teams. Veteran squads, Terminators, Dragnauts, Scout squads, Tech Marines, Transport vehicles. Markings for all these, well, this is new, I haven't seen this before. All laid out for you. Famous Bow Predator. Gunships and land raiders, and then here's your, your showcase. All your miniatures laid out. Um, really helpful painting reference to use. And these are new new photographs here, uh, showing you the newer Primaris models and vehicles. Just here, these characters all need to be updated. I'm sure Games Workshop have got more higher priorities, different things, but um, not so much Ashtraf. But these are all old, Dante especially. Yeah, he's quite small. You compare him to the other miniatures, he needs to be updated. Yeah. All very nice. Yeah, the primary springs do look nice, painted up for Blood Angels. They do look good. Terminators. Death Company. Gives you an idea of what a list would look like. So, nice lot of elite infantry, and it's similar to how I run mine. And then uh, some vehicles being used as well. So, for Blood Angel, I put my list together. I wanted to stay away from sort of regular Space Marine type uh, vehicles, especially. So, I didn't want rhinos and uh, that the regular uh, Space Marine vehicles. I wanted to focus in on. There's some there in my list, but I wanted to focus more on unique Blood Angels units, things like Sanguinary Guard. Uh, that kind of thing there, to have them as the, the main sort of focus. Okay, so we're on to the rules now. So Warriors of, of Bow. Uh, it's just talking about usual uh, clarifications. So it's talking about Blood Angels keyword and you swap them out for it. For example, Angels of Million, uh, that kind of thing just there. They should know no fear, regular for space range, career or foul morale tests for this unit, so it's gonna be help gonna help your infantry out. Then Black Rage uh, here for things like Death Company and so on. You can add one to this unit's attacks characteristic for the duration of the fight phase if it charged in the preceding charge phase. So you get plus one attack on the charge. In addition, roll D6 each time this unit loses a wound. On a six, the wound is ignored, it has no effect. So similar to the old feel no pain for Death Company, they've brought that back. Uh, so pretty good. Extra attack really helpful and then the six to shrug off wounds as well so that's great they've got that in there for black rage here's the war gear list uh, we'll sort of flick back to this as we go along now what i want to say at this point is for uh, weapons the usual regular space marine weapons and uh, regular space marine units like a, a rhino for example i'm not going to cover in this book here just check out the Space Marine Codex Review, and I cover all of the regular Space Marine units and then we're really going to focus in on specific Blood Angels units here and sort of skip over regular uh, Space Marine units and regular vehicles, just presume you already know the rules for that. If you're not sure on some of the rules uh, and want to see a tactic and review of regular Space Marine uh, units, uh, such as uh, Rhinos and Razorbacks and, and Land Raiders and so on, then check out the Space Marine Codex Review. I'm just going to primarily focus in on unique Blood Angels units here. Uh, in this review. So, you need characters there. We'll go on to the stats then for these. Uh, Commander Dante here is first of all. Uh, also mentioned, check out chapter approved for any, uh, for these codex reviews I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna do them straight from the book. And then, uh, bear in mind chapter approved, consult that just to check any changes uh, and slight tweaks and points and so on that have taken place. So I'm just gonna go straight from the book here uh, for these codex reviews. So, Commander Dante points are at the back here. He's power level 11. Subscribers have been asking me to call out the power levels for these. He's power level 11. And 
He is 215 points, is expensive enough. Anything over 200 points for a character is expensive enough. You're only getting sort of a small miniature for that, <laughs> so it's not too big. Movement 12 though, the jump pack. 2 plus weapon skill and ballistic skill, strength and toughness 4. 6 wounds, 6 attacks, very very high. Leadership 9 and a 2 plus save. He's armed with the axe, Mortalis, and uh, just to clarify, it includes all the war gear, so you're not going to pay any more points than 215. Axe, Mortalis, Inferno Pistol, Frag and Crack Grenades, only one uh, model per army. So Inferno Pistol is like a short range melter, range 6, pistol 1, strength of 8, minus 4 on the AP and D6 damage. If you get to within 3 inches, uh, you roll 2D6 and uh, discard the lowest results. It's nasty enough, and you'll be hitting on 2s. And you can fire it whilst you're in combat. Although, it sounds great firing pistols in combat, I've noticed this in some games, it doesn't happen very often. Because usually you charge in, uh, you fight in combat, then the next turn comes around and your opponent usually usually pulls out of combat. And that means you never do get to fire your pistol on the following round. So it's quite rare actually you get to fire your pistols whilst in combat. Uh, but having said that, it's still nice enough, and you can go 12, you know, ambush with that pistol as well. So, nasty enough now. Uh, the Axe Mortalis is plus 2 strength, so you will fight at strength 6. It's AP minus 3 and D3 damage. You can reroll failed wound rolls for this weapon if the target is a character, so he's great for character assassination. Fantastic weapon. You know, with tons of attacks. Brilliant weapon skill. So he is nasty enough. Frank and Crack Grenades, they should no fear. Chapter Master, you reroll failed hit rolls for friendly blood injuries units within six of him. Three roll hits, which is helpful, very helpful. The Death Mask, uh, enemy units suffer minus one modified to their leadership whilst having three inches of any models wearing a Death Mask. It's not, I don't think it's that impressive. It's not that impressive. You know, you basically, gonna if they fail right, you're going to kill an extra model's going to flee. That's about it. Uh, Iron Halo, and it's a rule that you can easily forget. Iron Halo 4 plus Invon save to protect him, and then Jump Pack Assault. He can deep strike down, uh, turn one onwards, and uh, he has to be more than 9 inches away from any enemy units. Gabriel Seth for uh, the Flesh Terrors. Here, yeah, so his power level 7. It's usually quite cheap. Yeah, he's 135 points. Pretty cheap HQ here. Uh, movement 6, weapon skill and ballistic skill 2 plus, strength toughness 4, 6 wins so for him. 4 attacks, leadership 9 and 3 up save. And he comes with the Blood Reaver, which is times 2 strength, so he, he fights at strength 8. It's AP minus 2 and 3 damage. Oh, he's good enough. He's decent enough. Nation of Fear, Chapter Master, again it's for Flesh Terrors, reroll hits. It's failed hits, any type of hits, so you know he can help out units in the shooting phase as well. Yep, same for Dante. Just any type of hits, very very good. And then uh, four plus in one save for him. Uh, Lord of Slaughter or D6 each time a friendly flesh terror unit finishes its move in six of Gabriel Seth. When it consolidates on a six, that unit can immediately fight for a second and final time. That's cool. And he's good. So you put him inside a Storm Raven, for example, so you can, because he's only movement six, you can get him up there nice and quick, uh, along with a couple other units and Dreadnought, uh, and then get him into combat, and then you can use that ability. And he's helping all of those units out, rerolling hits. Whirlwind of Gore. Each time you roll a hit of a six in the fight phase, inflict additional, inflict one additional hit on the target. So you're trying to get those sixes. Great. No, and he's cheap, 135 points is very cheap. So that's him. Uh, the Sanguinor is now 170 points for him. It's power level 9. Uh, it's movement 12. Weapon skill ballistic skill 2 plus. Strength for toughness 4. 5 wounds. 5 attacks. Leadership 9 and 2 up save. So sort of in between these two. Here, it's not as expensive as Dante, uh, but uh, he's more expensive than Seth, so sort of that 170 points.
Uh, just to mention, there's no points changes for either of these three here. They're all the same compared to the index, so they haven't gone up or down. Um, so he's armed with the Incarmine Broadsword, Frag and Crack Grenades. The broadsword is plus two strength, so he's going to fight strength six. It's AP minus four and D3 damage. So, nasty one. Station of No Fear. Aura of Fervor. You can add one to the attacks characteristic of friendly Blood Angels infantry units within six of the Sanguinite. So plus one attack. Very, very helpful indeed. Read boost other units. Very, very good. An Avenging Angel. The Sanguinite can charge even if you fell back. So you, you fight in combat, you can pull out, charge something else, or recharge into the same unit. Very flexible. Four plus invun save for him. The Death Mask. And then he has uh, Jump Assault as well. Jump Pack Assault for him. So they're all good. They're all good. They all grant some great bonuses as well. So these are excellent characters to have in amongst uh, your Blood Angels list. So Brother Corbelo uh, next. It's 94 points. And he hasn't changed yet. Same in the index as well. Uh, power level 5 for him. Movement 6, 2 plus. Weapon skill, ballistic skill, strength and toughness 4. 5 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 9 and 3 up save. And he's armed with Heaven's Teeth. Which is plus 1 strength and AP minus 1. It's always been a, a lot tamer of a weapon uh, than other characters have. Uh, far seeing eye, once per turn you can reroll a single dice made for Brother Kabulo. So that could be anything. And then the Red Grail. Friendly Blood Angels Infantry and Biker Units increase their strength by 1 whilst they're in 6. In addition, each time you make a hit roll of a 6 in the fight phase from, for a model in a Friendly Blood Angels unit that is within 6 inches of Brother uh, Kabulo, that model may immediately make an, another close combat attack using the same weapon. These bonus attacks cannot themselves generate any additional close combat attacks. Little perk there. If you have them in amongst your force then six is to hit, it's an extra attack. Which is decent here. It's the Red Grail, it's a higher quality, there's more bonuses to it than a regular uh, Blood Chalice for the Priest. The Narfecium. I really like the rules for this. At the end of your movement phase, you do your movement first, you move them up to a unit that you need to be near. Brother Kabulo can attempt to Heal or heal or revive a single model. Select a Blood Angels infantry or biker unit within three inches of him. If that unit contains a wounded model, it immediately regains D3 lost wounds. In if the chosen unit contains no wounded models, but one or more of its models has been slain during the battle or a dice on a four plus model is returned to play with one wound remaining. If he fails to revive a model in this manner, he can do nothing else the remainder of the turn. Shoot, charge, fight, and so on as he recovers the Gene Seed of the Fallen Warrior. The unit can only be the target of the Narfakium ability once in each turn. So you can't stack up a load of Sanguinary Priests around just to revive a whole unit. So, it is, I love the rules for this. It really is good. You know, to help out characters that have been wounded, they've, they've gone in, they've fought uh, a combat, and they've taken some wounds. They can link up with him, uh, or any model armed with the Narfakium, and then they can revive wounds. Or if you've got a unit that's down, depleted, uh, then he can revive models. Helpful for like units like, I used him to help out units like Terminators. You know, Terminator takes a wound or a model slain. Uh, he's helpful for helping them out. So, Kabula's okay. The cheaper option, and in my opinion the better model, is the Sanguinary Priest. Which again is an HQ choice. The... Sanguinary Priest is 69 points, significantly less, about half the points cost. You then have to take a, a Bolt Pistol and Chainsaw, those are, those are free upgrades, and then Frag and Crack Grenades, it's just a flat 69 points. Let's just double check here, yeah, Bolt Pistol should be 0, yes. And then Chainsaw should be 0, yes. Yeah. So, uh, 69 points. Yeah, and that's, there's no change there compared with the index. So I, I usually take this one. Uh, movement, movement 6, 2 plus weapon skills, you still keep that. Blister skill 3 plus, although he's not really armed with anything great, so I'm happy to lose that. Strength for toughness 4, 4 wounds. 
uh, three attacks, leadership nine and three up save, and then uh, that's the armament there. Does come with a, still keep the block chalice, and the abilities you still keep the plus one strength units within six. So thunder hammer terminators, strength five gets doubled. Always all of a sudden they're striking at strength ten. So they're then winding things like land raiders, uh, Lehman Rust tanks, toughness eight. They're wind them on a three plus instead of a four plus. So I think that helps for you know a cheap 69 point upgrade. And then uh, he has the knife vacuum as well, the exactly the same rules as here. So I, I love Sanguinary Priest, I think they're great. Really, really good. So I think they're a great job. And the model's fantastic. One of my one of the best Blood Angels uh, sculpted miniatures out there, I think. Man, I'm really happy with how mine came up, so good recommend that one. So, in one, one way it does work is to take a, a, a regular unit and then just boost it up by having a few characters mixing in with them, granting them extra strength and extra attacks and an ability to uh, recover lost wounds and slain models. And 69 points to do it. Very, very cheap indeed. So, for Tactica, I'd recommend the Priest there. And another great thing about these, you can. I sort of do it in my Blood Angels list, you pay up for quite an expensive and decent HQ for one of these like named characters for example and then for your second HQ choice, maybe you're running a battalion then you can take a cheap HQ uh, so you're not spending out too many points on characters otherwise if you take two, two characters each at 150 points, 200 points each all of a sudden 300 or 400 points has been spent before you even began to fill out the rest of your force so cheap HQ helps fill in that slot just there. Mephiston is next. So he's 145 points, nothing's changed there compared to the index. He's power level 8. The priest is power level 4 by the way. Movement 7. 2 plus, weapon skill and ballistic skill, strength and toughness 5 and 5 wounds. 4 attack, leadership 9 to 2 up save. He is armed with a sanguine sword. Just the usual armament there, and a uh, plasma pistol, which remember we hit on a 2+, plus, so it's decent. Uh, you can go standard overcharge, as usual, uh, loadout there, or stats there uh, for space marines for the plasma pistol. The sanguine sword is times 2 strength, so be fighting at strength 10, AP minus 3, and D3 damage. So nasty enough. They should no fear, Lord of Death. Broad D6 each time. A fist on loses a wound, and a five plus the wound is ignored and has no effect. So adds to his durability, and then psychic hood. You can add one to deny the witch test you take for uh, chief librarian of fist on against enemy psychers within twelve. He can attempt to manifest two psychic powers and attempt to deny two psychic powers. Helpful. You know, smite and three psychic powers from the sanguinary discipline. So he's, a, he's a very very good psyker. Really is good. And he's cheap. 145 points. You're getting a lot for that. I mean, yeah, his, his stat line and his armament, I think, is worth that. Plus the, the psychic ability. And he knows a lot of powers. He's really good. So he's a good HQ. Very, very good indeed. So he's a good one. So you've got a Librarian Dreadnought here. Now, what's interesting about these, I believe I'm correct, yeah, keywords here, character, and he's only eight wounds, so I think this means that this Dragnaught can hang behind of, it, of your own units, and he can't be shot at or picked out unless it's uh, snipers and uh, units similar to that. So that helps the, uh, to protect a larger unit like that. So, Librarian Dragnaught is power level nine. He's 130 points. Just as he is, then you've got the Furioso Force Halberd. It's probably included in the cost. Yeah, zero. And then the Furioso Fist and Stormbolter. Uh, a single. You have to pay 40 points for that. So you have to add that on for a single one. And then a storm box should be two points. 
Yep, two points. So you're paying out 170, 172 points. But 170, 172 points. It's not too bad here. Yeah, not too bad. Okay. He's actually dropped in points cost. It was 150 there in uh, the index. But whether, so you've got to anticipate the force how bad now is zero. I'm just checking if your SF is 40. No, no, he's dropped in points cost. So he's about 20 points cheaper than he was. It's pretty good. The model looks great as well, and it's unique. You know, you can get a Dreadnought, but it's a Blood Angel style one. Um, so very, very good. It is two plus weapon skill. Ballistic skill three plus wound six. Strength, uh, power level nine, by the way. Strength six, toughness seven, eight wounds. Free attacks, leadership nine and free up save. And these weapons here, Furio so Fist is times two strength, so he fights at strength 12, AP minus three and free damage, nice reliable damage. So it's good. And the Halberd is plus four strength, so it's... Now, this happens sometimes. This is, the Force Halberd is plus four strength, so it's still the same, it'll be strength 12. AP minus four and free damage. Why would you ever use the fist? You'd never use the fist. You'd always use the force halberd. Yep, I can't see any reason why you'd use the fist at all. It's just sort of redundant, and then but you are paying it in the points. So you're paying the points for something you never use. Um, you may replace the storm bolt with a heavy flamer or a melter gun. Uh, that's the usual cost for them, and then Psychic Hood, uh, as we've seen already, explodes result, and then smoke launch is available for him. It can manifest two, and deny one, and no smite, and two powers from the list. But I, I still rate the Dreadnoughts great. It's nasty enough. I suppose it all hangs on how good these Psychic powers are. We'll come to them later on. Obviously, the Blood Angel's now got six to choose from. We'll take a look at those a bit later in the review, see if it's worth using that discipline for the Blood Angels. I don't usually run psychers. I'd say the powers weren't that great, but there's six of them now, it's expanded, so they may well be pretty good. Uh, and Smite's always powerful enough. So regular librarian, I'm not gonna cover, it's just usual Space Marine rules. It's no extra, doesn't have, okay. The Primaris librarian, I've covered in the book, in the regular Space Marine book as well. Librarian and Terminator. I might have this miniature to paint up actually for Blood Angels. It's nice. So that's the rules as well. Is covered in the Codex, Space Marine Codex. Right, on to some other unique HQ Sis Astra next. Here yeah, is power level 8. He's 143 points. It's cheap enough. Hasn't changed in points value uh, from the index. Movement 12, do like speed of characters with jump packs. Be able to move around quickly, around the board, so they're not left around, you know, if you spend a turn walking somewhere and not doing anything, it can be a terrible waste. But he's able to get to places quickly. Movement 12, two plus weapons complex, it's got strength for toughness four, five wounds, four attacks, leadership none, two up save. He's armed with the executioner's axe, frag and crack grenades. Plus two strength, so strength six, AP minus three and D3 damage. If you roll a wound of six for this weapon, it causes three damage instead of D3. Okay. So, there's a, a fair few special rules for him. Redeemer of the Lost. All friendly Blood Angels units within six can use his leadership instead of their own, which is nine. In addition, friendly Death Company units automatically pass brow tests if they're within six. It's okay. It's helpful enough if you take it to sort of larger units that might get in trouble. Uh, jump pack assault available for him. Uh, Litanies of hate. You can reroll failed hit rolls in the fight phase of friendly blood injured units within six. So very very helpful. Really helpful. And then massive doom. Once per battle at the start of your movement phase, Astraf may grant chant the massive doom. Roll a d6 for each friendly blood injured infantry unit within six. If you roll a one, the unit suffers a mortal wound. Great. 
two to five dark rough raf uh, you can add one to hit rolls made for this unit in the fight phase to the end of your turn so you want twos to hit most units and then vessel of sanguinius you can add one to hit rolls made for this unit in the fight phase to the end of your turn in addition the unit has a four plus in one save wow nice major bonus for uh, Def Company. He does have the Rosarius, which is a 4 plus in one save. So he's cheap, he's cheap enough. And some great bonuses he can give out to other units. So you just keep a strategy on standby if you roll a 1 to get you out of trouble. You've got a chance of getting that 6, which is. So great bonuses, especially for Def Company. Very good. So for characters, I, I would have a focal point character for your army, for sure. I really would go for one of these named more expensive characters here, at least one of them, and then take a cheaper HQ. And then use them to two things. Uh, first thing I'd use it for is character hunting, so you, your units charge in and your character moves in to try and pick out a certain character, sort of guaranteed kill against a weaker character, or to take on one of the H tougher HQs that your opponent may have. Uh, and then the, the second use is to buff other units that you have nearby. So you've got a cluster of units around, and then like rerolls to hit. Fantastic uh, bonus, uh, for example, or any of the other bonuses that are available, and then play them that way. So enhancing, you sort of cluster a lot of units together, and then have this good character, you know, that six inch or 12 inch bubble of influence, and then uh, go out hunting, taking opportunities to take on uh, other characters or to sort of pick off remaining wounds on, on monstrous creatures and vehicles, that kind of use, just there. So that's how I think I play them. Uh, so Lamartis then, fantastic miniature here, really, I don't have this one, uh, but Lamartis is a very, very, very nice character. Uh, he's power level seven. He's 129 points, he hasn't changed since the index. Movement 12, again, nice speed, two plus, Weapon skill, ballistic skill, three plus strength, toughness four, four wounds, five attacks, nice healthy number of attacks. Leadership nine to three up save. It's got the blood crozius frag and crack grenades, bolt pistol. So it's plus two strength. So it's fighting at strength six. AP minus two and D three damage. That is good. And it's cheap enough really for character. Fury unbound, you can roll foul charge rolls. And failed hit rolls in the fight phase for friendly death company units within six. Brilliant bonuses. Reroll failed charges. Guardian of the Lost, all friendly death company units within six can use his leadership, which is nine. Jump back assault and the Rosarius is a four plus in one save, so he's very, very good. But reroll reroll failed charges. And hit rolls. Brilliant bonus. So you know you could have a you could for example, nice combination, two units of eight, Death Company, uh, with Power Swords, Thunder Hammers, Power Fists, that kind of combination, and then have him in the middle of them, granting them reroll charges and uh, reroll hits. All of a sudden, you massive, massive bonuses to those units. So really increasing their effectiveness for, for not, not too many points. Plus you get the abilities of the actual character, the actual stat line and weaponry that he has himself as well. So you've got Chaplin and Terminator armor. That's just regular Space Marine rules, Primaris Chaplin, regular Chaplin, which I, I, I use Blood Angels, regular Chaplin. You've got the Litanies of Hate here for them. re -roll, failed hit rolls in the fight phase, Blood Angels units within six. Really good. Yeah, so I, I use that as a cheaper option. I mean, a regular uh, chaplain is 72 points. So, um, and that, that ability to reroll hits is exceptionally helpful. Because you know, you're often, Blood Angels are paying out for more elite units, so every hit counts, ability to reroll, especially for smaller units, so if you've paid out. A, a nice amount of points for for the weaponry and the upgrades. You know, you want those hits to come through, and this is a nice cheap way of just of amplifying. You don't have to buy more, get or purchase more models and points. Uh, the rerolls there count as if there are more models in the unit um, by uh, enhancing them with something like a chaplain. Tycho the Lost. It's power level five, by the way, for a chaplain. Power level four. 
for Tycho the Lost. He's 70 points uh, in the index, and he's 70 points here. Yes. Very cheap HQ. Very, very cheap. Movement 6, weapon skill and ballistic skill 2 plus. Strength and toughness 4, 5 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 9, and 2 up save. I mean, for 70 points, getting a fantastic stat line. So he's armed with Blood Song, a dead man's hand. Blood Song is. Uh, you choose one or both of the profiles below. If you choose both, it's minus one for hit rolls. You'll still be hitting on three plus if you go for both. The Mastercrafted Bolt Gun, range 24, rapid fire one, strength four, AP minus one and two damage. And then the Melter Gun, usual rules for a Melter Gun. The Dead Man's Hand is a melee weapon. It's a strength for the user, which is strength four, and AP minus two, one damage. It's got a four plus in one save. And then Abhor the Beast, Tycho the Lost, may make D3 additional close combat attacks if he's within an inch of enemy orcs after he has piled in during the fight phase. Yeah, so, yeah, very cheap HQ indeed, and well equipped, not to come. A cool way to use characters like this, a character can't, usually can't be shot at if he's burned a unit, so you can screen a character and then use something like a melter gun or a plasma pistol and just snipe the opponent by shooting them and then they, they usually can't fire back if they're behind the screen of units, so that's a cheeky way of using characters that are armed with decent shooting weapons. Yeah, and the melter gun's well spent because he's on 2 plus to hit. Regular captain, Captain Tycho, power level 5, he's 95 points, hasn't changed compared to the index, so you then get Still keep the same number of wounds and attacks, the same stat line. Yep. Same equipment. The only difference is, is you get rights of battle. We can reroll hit rolls of one, made for any blood angels units within six. And that's it. I can't see. Any other difference? No. So just the ability to reroll ones. So I, if I had to choose, I'd just go Tycho the Lost. That's the Death Company version. I suppose maybe you fix, depending on the theme that you're going for your force, and then you've got regular in the Golden Armor Captain Tycho just there. Uh, Captain in Terminator Armor, Captain in Catapult. Fractile armor, just the usual rules you'll find in the Space Marine Codex. Primaris Captain, Captain in Gravis armor, Lieutenants, Primaris Lieutenants, all of these have been added in here to this new Codex. Tech Marine, usual rules, Tactical Squad, usual rules. Now, I, I don't usually go for regular troops, I'll be running different detachments, not battalions. I've got no troops on my Blood Angels list. Uh, but the Tactical Squads for Blood Angels, they do look very nice, they, they are unique. Um, like shoulder pads and uh, eagle's wings and so on uh, so they do look very nice tactical squads do look very nice painted up uh, for blood angels but I haven't gone down that route uh, their intercessors are available for them as well scouts which I think these are painted up with cream overalls here I think they look better with the grey if you swap that out for like a uh, codex grey kind of colour I think just looks a bit more professional and men more uh, menacing. More sort of serious colour scheme than this cream colour. But then, and it may be an option if I'm looking for some cheap troops. Scouts would be pretty cool. So we've got like a, a, an aggressive list that units charging in and, and zooming in to fight, deep striking. But these could be quite good sort of infiltrating, scouting ahead before the main force comes in. So it would fit quite nice and they're cheaper. Uh, option to take if you're looking for some cheaper troops for your list. So then uh, we're into elites now. Sanguinary Guard. Very, very nice models indeed. Some people not keen on the wings, some people leave the wings off. I have the wings on there, just, just so iconic, so angelic looking. And then the gold armour. Uh, I just think they look brilliant. So I've actually been expanding the unit. If you want to keep up with Blood Angels and the updated list check out the plus channel on there there is uh, an 8th edition uh, army development video and in there I show you the new blood angels list talk about units and tactics and upgrade and the 
the changes I've made, units I've dropped, you know, new units I've added in, expanded the overall philosophy of this new list. Very excited about it, and I've been painting up new units to go and, uh, and match up with that new list. And you can leave your own comments and feedback and, and help shape and change the list uh, long before it comes out on the regular channel here. So you can check that out. There's unique Blood Angel Battle Reports on the Plus channel as well. So details of that are in the video description below. Now, this is where some points changes have taken place, which is what we're all hoping for. So, Sanguinary Guard are 20 points here. They're, they're 22 points in the index, so they've dropped, the actual base cost has dropped a small amount, by about 10%. Now, I, I really like these. I really like them. I like them because they're unique. You know, they're iconic Blood Angels, and I really want to make them work. So one of the bonuses I've done is to take a decent character. The Sanguinor or Dante would work great with these as well, just, just to really give give you value for points, just to enhance uh, the, the standard unit, just to boost them up. Movement 12, so nice and quick around the battlefield. Weapon skill ballistic skill 3 plus. Strength for toughness 4. They do come with two wounds. So you take a unit 10, but there's 20 wounds there, and looks a 2-up save. So there's, there's durability there, uh, 2 wounds, 2 attacks as well, leadership 8. Now you take 4 of them, the power level 8, you take 4, you can add additional 6, so you can go all the way up to 10. Uh, each sanguinary guard is armed with an Angelus bolt gun and carmine sword, frag and crack grenades. So, the Angelus bolt gun in the index was nine points, and a lot of people complained about this. It is now uh, three points, so serious points reduction. And you know, it's nine points down to three points doesn't sound very much. If you've got a unit of ten, all of a sudden you've saved sixty points. And sixty points is is virtually like a sanguinary priest, for example. You could purchase a uh, another a smaller character with that, or you could just expand the unit out. So you've got a unit of eight, you might have the points then to get a unit of ten. So that really helps out, especially elite armies like Blood Angels. So that's all very good. Frag and crack grenades available for these as well. So the Incarmine Sword is 13 points in the index. It's 12 points here, so some reduction. The Incarmine Axe is 16 points here in the Codex, and it is 16 points. It's just the sword they've reduced down by a point. So some point savings here. In fact, if you had it all together, you see six points saved on the gun, two points saved on the model, and say a point saved on the sword, nine points. Unit of 10, 90 point reduction. That's another unit in your list. So it doesn't sound very much, but it just helps you expand the, the army out. Now the Incarmine Sword is strength of the user, strength 4, AP minus 3, and D3 damage. It's the, it's the D3 damage is the killer. Because you, you're dishing out extra wounds, all of a sudden you could use these for taking on monstrous creatures, uh, characters especially, vehicles, even vehicles. You know, because the usual strength 4 doesn't sound very much. But it wounds the same as strength six against the usual vehicle. You know, it's toughness seven. If you're strength four, it's gonna be fives to wound. If you're strength six, it's still gonna be fives to wound. So strength four is still decent enough uh, for wounding vehicles. And for that reason, I prefer the sword over the axe. I mean, the axe you're paying out, oh, it's a total waste of points. The only advantage is, see with the axe here, you're on plus one strength, so you do fight at strength five. The only time I can see that being helpful is if you're fighting against toughness five uh, targets, you're hitting on, or you're wounding on fours instead of fives, or if you're fighting against things like marines, you wound them on three plus instead of four plus, but you do drop the AP, it's minus two instead of minus three, and you're paying an extra four points, so I way, way prefer the swords. So in my, in my unit I have mostly swords, which is a cheaper option, a couple of axes. Just in case you do come up against some toughness 5 or you want to wound uh, some uh, toughness 4 models. See, the axe or the sword charging in against toughness 7 vehicle, you can still be wounded on 5s. 
Now, options then. Uh, the Angelus Bolt Gun, by the way, is uh, range 12, assault 2. Uh, so you can deep strike down within 9 inches and still get to fire your weapons. It's assault 2, so you need 10 of them, 20 shots. Um, and remember, your the usual your character's going to be reroll hits, so it's going to count for your shooting. Strength 4, AP minus 1, which is helpful, and, and 1 damage. All models in the unit may take a death mask, which is a two points a time. That minus one. I don't think I bother keep them because they're expensive enough as they are. Any model may replace his endless bolt gun with an inferno pistol or a plasma pistol. This is an option here, just to give these a little bit of anti-tank. So the inferno pistol, that's the six-inch uh, melter pistol. Is I'm just checking here. Now it's just 20 points. This is what put me off. It's 20 points in the index. And you're looking at nine, <laughs> nine points. Nine points. Inferno pistol, nine points. Yep, 20. Unbelievable. So really, you're taking Andrew's bolt gun for three points. For a six point increase, you can take the Inferno pistol. So that is serious consideration. It really is. If I had a unit of, unit of eight of them, I'd try and take at least three of them with the Inferno pistols. Three or four, give them half of them, give them the melter pistols for that point. You can bury some very nasty weaponry inside, and all of a sudden, if you do that, say you take four of them in unit, all of a sudden they've become uh, anti vehicle, at deadly, utterly deadly towards vehicles. Yeah, um, tell, you what else, tell you what else would really help out. Uh, I found that usually you charge in and you can take some a decent amount of wounds off a vehicle. But if you're able to, to move up, fire your pistols and reduce some wounds and then charge in and finish the vehicle off, that's an option. That makes these way, way better. That's a massive points reduction. Nine points. Absolute bargain. Now, the, the range is an issue. Six inches. But you can make that up with your move. 12 so you can the range is short but your movement makes up for that so sound grenade guy are worth paying attention to now with these points reductions it really is a big difference so i'm guessing the plasma pistol is the usual amount which is seven points which again is definitely another option plasma pistol yeah seven points that Inferno pistol is exceptionally good value. So, plasma pistols are great. You can overcharge them and then, I think, supercharge, yeah. Or all of one, the barrier is slain. We can go, if you've got your character nearby and you're rerolling hits, then that's definitely an option. Yep. So, yeah, all of, no, the, the pistol armament on these. Uh, it was always wise to do it, but it, I, I struggled to do it, I couldn't justify it. You know, for example, four Inferno pistols on my unit, which I've already paid a lot of points for. Pushing on 200 points, you have to add another 80 points on top. Oh, it was just too much, I, did, I never armed them with pistols, but now, it's definitely worth it. Any model where places in Carmine Sword with an Incarmine Axe, uh, which you pay an extra four points for, or a Power Fist. Now, 12 points. Oh dear me, this is a straight swap then. You could swap the sword for the, for the fist. You're going to get times two strength, so strength eight. Now you wound your vehicles on a three plus. Uh, threes, minus three on the AP and D3 damage. The only downside to this is your minus one to hit. But if you have the character nearby and you're re-rolling, then you're increasing your chances. It's been tempting to go for the fist. I still think I could do enough damage with swords against vehicles and then take the pistol option. Yep. Try and take four four of those pistols. 
at least. Uh, say three or four. Three's risky, four's pretty good. You know, fire four of them, gonna miss with one, and then you're in there. Three's to hit, two of them get through, two to six damage, and you're looking at trouble for a vehicle. Yeah, so I'd say four, at least. Now, as of Ascalion, you can reroll found hit rolls for models from this unit if they're in six of a friendly Blood Angels Warlord. So, see, the Warlord needs to go with them. And the reason why I run the Sanguinor, yeah, it's here. So, the Sanguinor, like a lot of characters, they give you reroll hits. But these guys get that anyway, if they're in six. What he grants is the extra attack, which is a major bonus to these. So you're not bouncing the same ability off the two units. You're not going, uh, you know, re-rolls, take the same, not re-rolls because you're in a wall, and you're sort of wasting that, um, the two abilities just bouncing off each other. But here, it's plus one attack, and then re-roll those attacks. If they're in six, you see the symbiosis going on <laughs> between uh, your, your character and just having a sanguinary garden. You, you, this is what you've got to work on for Blood Angels is characters enhancing expensive units and that, I mean, you, virtually, if you if you combine that together, the plus one attack and the rerolls to hit, you're virtually doubling the effectiveness of that unit. Virtually doubling the effectiveness. So that's why it's so worth adding in a decent character. Now, let's just have a look here. Yeah, see, Dante, reroll hits. Reroll hits, what's the point? So that's why I rate the Sanguinal to go with these guys. So that's that combination. Still very, very good. Jump pack assaults, they're fantastic for deep striking down. Uh, somewhere quiet, I'd say I wouldn't land these in front of the enemy, the full battle line, they're just going to get blown away, but you deep strike them down, hold them off for a few turns, and then uh, bring them down by jump pack assault, somewhere quiet. Uh, charge into an isolated unit, something like that. And then move them in to the, the thick of the fighting, weather the storm, you've got two up save, two wounds, some models die, then start using your pistols, fire at one thing, charge the house and just cause havoc, and your character jumping about as well. I, I rate that combination very much indeed, and it's all good here because of the points reductions. So, so I, I've laboured a bit on Sanguinary Guard, uh, but I wanted to get some good tactica in there for this unique Blood Angels unit. So that's that one. They're uh, eight, I've already said that, for power level. Power level six here for Sanguinary Ancient. He's uh, elite. He's 84 points. Now, just checking here in the index. It's 84, so he hasn't changed. Now it's movement 12. This is the one with the banner. I wasn't sure where to use this one. Uh, weapon skill uh, 3 plus, ballistic skill 3 plus, strength and toughness 4, 4 wounds, 3 attacks, slish 9 2 up saving. It's not that much better than your 22 point model. He's on the Angelus Bolt Gun, which you've got to pay for. In Carmine Sword, which you've got to pay for. Fragment Crack Lane. So look at about 100 points. Is it worth it? from about 30 points all the way up to, oh, uh, mm, about 40 points all the way up to 100. You can take a Death Mask, Inferno Pistol, Plasma Pistol, and Carmine Saw with Axe or Power Fist, all the usual options. He's got the Heirs of Ascalion, as usual, Jump Pack Assault, Death Mask. Right, so Blood Angels Chapter Banner. Blood Angels units have been six, add one to their leadership, which I think is just ugh, not worth it. In addition, you can reroll Wound Rolls of one. Reroll ones for wounds. Oh, don't know. Don't know whether it's worth the extra sixty odd points for reroll ones to wound. I suppose it would help out to some degree. I just don't think the enhancement there is as much as you get with other. Like a uh, reroll hits, I think it's, it's stronger than reroll ones to wound. So I don't usually go for him. It's quite expensive, 100 points odd just to get that, so I don't usually bother. Uh, Primaris uh, Apocryphery. Aggressor Squad. There's the usual rules. Right, now, 
This is interesting, a sanguinary novitiate. Now, I, I find this interesting because if you go all the way back here, you've got your usual uh, sanguinary priest here. It's power level four, 69 points. But now you've got, I don't think this is in here before, sanguinary novitiate. Pretty much the same stat line as the priest, his weapon skill is not 2+, plus, it's 3+, plus, which is happy to concede on that. And he's still at the same amount of wounds, same amount, same amount of attacks. And his leadership's a bit less, leadership 8, his leadership 9 here. But the Sanguinary Novitiate. No, he is... Yeah, I'm just looking, he is in the index there, Novitiate with a jump pack. But not anything else. <laughs> it's interesting. Just to, so here he comes with just a, it's just a standard uh, sanguinary negotiate, uh, which is fifty-five points. Right, it's not that much different really in points. Cost no bolt pistol, chainsaw, fragment grenades, uh, and that's it. The jump pack option's not there now, so they've changed that round. So it comes with enough Echium, so the ability to D3 wounds recovery or to 4 plus to uh, bring back a slain model. But then you lose the plus one strength for Blood Chalice. So, I would, so if, you, if you're desperate just to take uh, for something with enough Echium, then go for him if you want a cheaper option, but it's not that much different, so I still go for the regular Sanguinary Post. Okay, so. Def Company Dreadnought is next. It's power level nine. He's ninety-eight points here uh, in the book, and he's one hundred and twenty-eight points in the index. But we'll check out the weaponry here to see what the difference is. Yeah, so I've checked here with the index. So I think he's gone crashing down in points. Because the melee weapons are the same, really. They haven't really changed in points value. So, uh, Def Company Dragon, yeah, 128. Yeah, 90. So, a, a fair reduction here, actually. So, that's good news for the uh, Def Company. Fans of the Def Company here. Uh, it's moving 8. Here's a quick Dragnaut. Uh, weapons skill, ballistic skill, 3 plus. Strength 6, toughness 7. 8 wounds. It's not a character, is he? No. Uh, Four attacks, leadership seven, and three up. So, so there's two Furioso fists, which will cost you a pair of them is fifty points. Yep, a single one's forty. Uh, Stormbolter and a melter gun. So you have to you have to pay for them. The melter gun's not an option. It he does come with that. Uh, then you can go for blood talons, which is. Uh, 65 points in the index and 65 points here as well so it's, um, you pay an extra 15 points if you want that option we'll check them out in the rules in a moment you can replace a storm bolter and or melt gun with a heavy flamer um, does that mean I'm just look, so this, mo this model may replace its storm bolter and or melt a gun with heavy flamer. So you could go double heavy flamer, I presume, from this. Um, and you can replace your smoke launchers, which I find quite helpful actually to protect the vehicle with a magna grapple. Uh, the magna grapple is uh, you target a vehicle and you add two to your charge roll, which would help if you want to try and get that charging. There's a number of little perks here to help Blood Angels get into combat. You see it in the stratagems as well. So Games Workshop tried to fix that. A lot of people were saying Blood Angels is very difficult with them. A lot of units you deep strike in, then you've got to try and make that nine inch charge. It's difficult. Uh, so they've added a few little bonuses you can use to try and increase your chances of getting into combat, which is sort of the whole ambush descending from the sky theme of the Blood Angels. I'm just seeing Magna Grapple. It is five points. Smoke launchers, no cost. Just pay an extra five points if you want magna grapples. Looks good on the model, but 
Mm. Yes, it's helpful. Yeah, there's no roll to hit with it, so you're guaranteed it's plus two. To so this does, this really does help. Um, get your charge in. I was going to say when you deep strike, but you can't <laughs> with this one anyway. It would help if you had that ability to deep strike in. Because um, then you'd need seven on the charge, yeah, that kind of uh, ability, that kind of bonus would help out. But anyway, that's Magna Grapple for five points, a bit more reliable. It only works against vehicles though. So, Furioso fists them. It's time to two strength. Trying to strength for 12. AP minus 3 and 3 damage. Nice, reliable damage. If you're armed with two of them, you can reroll failed hit rolls. Nice. Not ones. Reroll hits. That is a, a decent bonus. It really is, because you've only got four attacks. You, you want it to be good. But still, you'd need a brilliant round of combat to destroy a vehicle. You'd need all four of them. You know, a 10 wound, 11 wound vehicle. You're still going to need all three of them to hit. All three of them to wound, and your opponent to fail all three saves to destroy a vehicle. So you're going to struggle. Whereas in the old days, back in 7th, you just knife through butter anything, pretty much. So, do you have Black Rage? Nice. It's interesting the vehicle has that. You do get an extra attack on the turn you charge. Helpful, so now you've got five attacks. And I suppose the vehicle gets this as well. A D6 each time you lose a wound on a six, you ignore it. For an eight wound vehicle. Nice. Explodes. Insatiable. This model may move up to six when you consolidate in the fight phase. You can. Oh, that's really good. It really is good. Yeah, you, you, you consolidate into something like a vehicle, for example. Opponent's got a predator sitting there. You consolidate into it. it stops him from firing the next turn. So that's helpful enough. Smoke launches and Magna Grapple, we've covered. Um, blood Talons, plus four strength, so strength 12, same as the fist. Yep, uh, only minus two. Okay, and free damage. You can reroll failed hit rolls and wound rolls for this weapon. Yeah, it makes more sense from the fluff, but. Yeah, I don't know now. Maybe still go. I'd go with the two fists then. I don't know. Reroll wounds though is helpful. Yeah, no, it's marginally better. But it's just minus two. You know, you're charging against a vehicle, your opponent then gets to save with a five plus. It does happen furiously a number of times. So, but no, it's nasty enough. Reroll wounds is helpful. Okay. So Death Company Dreadnought, and then even more viable now with the points reduction for that one. So now onto uh, regular Death Company. The power level eight for five of them. You can take additional five or additional ten, so you can go up to units of like, fifteen of these. Uh, so there were seven. They were seventeen points each in the index. There's still 17 points here in the codex. So the stat line is just a regular marine. It's movement 6, 3 plus weapon skill, and ballistic skill, strength for toughness 4, 1 wound, 2 attacks though. Do you get the 2 attacks? Leadership 7, the 3 up save. So they do come with the black rage. They get an extra attack when they charge. And 6 is to ignore the damage coming through. So that, that's the nice theme for the death company. Uh, you can give them jump packs. And then you've got access to all of these options here. Any model may replace its bolt pistol with a bolt gun, hand, flamer, inferno pistol, plasma pistol, power axe, power fist, power more, power sword. So you can go for fantastic combinations. The power more here is plus two strength, AP minus one is pretty cool. Power swords are pretty good. I usually try and bury a couple of thunder hammers in there so you can take on the toughest of targets. Toughest of characters, monsters, creatures, vehicles, because here you're, you're fighting at times two strength, so strength eight and a wound most vehicles and a three plus, minus three on the save, and then a, a flat three damage. But it's minus one to hit, but you've got a character in there re rolling. It's a bunch better. And then I will go for a mix of pistols as well, especially Inferno pistol. 
So I go, my loadout I reckon for Def Company would be a unit of, I think 10 is too much in points and then uh, could be trouble for you for morale. So I go for units of 8. I'd bury some pistols in there, at least 4. And then a couple of thunder hammers and some power swords, something like that. So you've got an all rounder unit that can happily charge into anything. And that's a nasty enough unit. Yep. Uh, she can take jump packs here for them and jump pack assault gained for those. So uh, death company fine. Yeah, so you keep the, the, the size of the unit down a bit and don't upgrade all of the models and that will help keep your points cost low enough. Is the uh, options I would go for. Yep, and enhance them with characters. Servitors, regular, space room rules, Terminator Ancient, Company Ancient, Primaris Ancient. Yeah. The uh, the Terminator Ancient, the banner is an Archangel standard. Plangers units have been six. If any friendly ancients add one to the leadership and then reroll. Hit rolls in the fight phase. Well seven six. Uh Company Ancient and Primaris Ancient, that's the really cool banner where on a 4 plus you die, the model dies if you're in 6. Uh, on a 4 plus you get to attack with one attack or shoot with your weapon. It's great if you're armed with heavier weapons. That's, I think that's the usual space marine rules. For a Company Ancient and Primaris Ancient, Company Champion, Company Veterans, uh, Reavers are covered here as well. Just all the usual space marine rules for them. Terminators, Terminator Assault Squad. I, I run these here for my Blood Angels. Uh, they're nice and durable. Thunder Hammers, I usually go for Thunder Hammer, th Thunder, Thunder Hammerators, <laughs> Thunder Hammers, and uh, Storm Shields. So you've got the nice durability and protection, the nice 3 plus invun save, and then the ability to strike hard in combat uh, with the Thunder Hammers, and then not run up something like a Chaplain in there just to give them the rerolls to hit. Really boosts them. Yep. Yep, yeah, that's pretty much all I need to say about that. Yeah, Lightning Claws are okay, but it's sort of pain out for a super elite unit to take on, to mash through medium infantry or light infantry. So I usually like the Terminators to be able to take on a tougher target, the toughest of monstrous creatures, toughest of characters, toughest of vehicles. And then just boost them up and add a Sanguinary Priest in there as well. So that's the kind of angle I'm coming from for... Terminators, just a bit of tactic for them. Cataphracti Terminators, uh, Tartarus Terminators, just there, this is all regular space marine rules. Vanguard Veterans, Stone Guard Veterans, actually have some of these painted up for the Blood Angels. Give the Sergeant access to the pistols. Up to two of them can take special weapons. And then any space marine can replace his special issue bolt gun with combi weapons, which are viable now. Yeah, they're pretty good. So I was running them in a drop pod, that kind of idea. Regular Dreadnought here, you can go for. Which, a regular Dreadnought, let's just check. Dreadnought weaponry. No, all right, okay. Regular Dreadnought has access to the heavy plasma cannon. Multi-melter and a twin laser cannon. It doesn't a regular dreadnought can't take the Furioso fists and so on. You've got to go to the specific uh, blood angels dreadnoughts for that. So I don't usually run a regular dreadnought. I, stand, I, I stayed away mostly stayed away from regular space room units. I wanted to go to, to emphasize the blood angel unique units just for a nice theme. Here he is, Furioso, beautiful model, really nice. So. The Furioso Dreadnought. He was 122 points in the index. Ah, he's 80 here. Yeah, I, I remember when I had the index, how pricey the Dreadnoughts were. But they, they've chopped that price right down. So, could see a resurgence of these. Okay, so, movement 8, they're still quick. Quick enough. Usual stat line. Four attacks. Um, 
So two few euros, so fierce, you're gonna an extra 50 on top of that. So about 130 odd points here. Got to pay up for the mill to come as well, Stormbolt, 100, 150 odd points now. But not near 200 like you used to be. Uh, so I, I like the combination here, and the, the rules seem great for it, is to take one fist and then the frag cannon. And keep the melter gun. Yeah, so you can make a mess of stuff with that. I mean, the, the frag cannon is uh, assault 2d6. You're looking at seven or eight shots. Strength 6, open minus one, and they're auto hits on the target. A bit of overwatch protection. I, I do love the weapon, it's cool. It looks great. Um, yeah, and you can, you know, disembark from somewhere frag cannon of light target charge into a vehicle a character something like that so one of them lumbering around is pretty intimidating just checking here the cost for the frag cannon 38 points costly enough usual rules uh, so you can go f replace one furioso fist I mean two furioso fist two furioso fist is cheap you know 50 points or if you take drop a fist, you only got to pay out the 38 points on top to take the yeah, and then you got a cost add on the melter gun as well, so you can end up paying a fair bit. You can give him blood talents, nice. Yeah, you can swap the melter gun storm bolter for heavy flamer. This model may replace its smoke launchers with a magna grapple. Okay. But, uh, do love the model, but we'll see about if I can get him into the new list or not. It's sort of doubts cast over him. Yeah, you know, back in seventh, and again, if you if you're used to playing seventh, or you you were playing 40k and seventh edition was out. Usually, targets like this, especially the Death Company Dreadnought, him, you could usually charge into a vehicle and knock down the the free hard points pretty effectively, or get that explodes result. Uh, because the the close combat weapons are pretty nasty, but now it's harder to kill vehicles now. So these aren't quite the devastating option they used to be. Uh, Contempt to Dreadnought then, Redempt to Dreadnought, those are all available. So loads of options here for Blood Angels. Assault Squad, what's nice about this is, I mean I'm skipping these, but they have put these in the codex. They haven't said refer to Space Marines Codex for all the rules. All the units that are available are all stat lined in here for you. So everything's in here. You don't have to go out and buy the Space Marine Codex. It's, everything's in this codex, which is great. Assault Squad, Bike Squad. Assault Squad's nice, there's some, some cheap infantry clearance. Give them bolt pistols, give them chainsaws, extra attacks. Not bad. But I, I do like, I love them with the yellow helmets, they look cool. Bikers, Attack Bike, Land Speeders, Incept, Scout Bikes. Devastators, Predator. I've been running Predator Annihilators, big fan of them, they look nice painted up for Blood Angels, so I do run those. But uh, usual rules for Space Marines. Their Hellblasters are nice as well, plan to use them for my uh, Red Scorpions. But again, this is all covered in the regular Space Marine Codex. Right, ah, Bow Predator, yeah. So, I wonder if this has been reduced down. It is heavy. He's 100 points. Yeah, he's 107 in the index, so it's a slight decrease for the Bow Predator. Usual stat line for the vehicles. Um, and then the combination I go for is the Twin Assault Cannon now, because it's fantastic. It's uh, 12 shots. Strength 6, minus 1, range 24. A lot of shooting available from that. Flamestorm cannons are okay, but unreliable, so I usually take the heavy bolters, which you can take, two heavy bolters. So now you're chucking out 12 shots, two heavy bolters, so uh, 18 shots from that. And then here you can take a storm bolter, so you can add an extra either two or four shots at close range. And then I usually take the hunter killer as well, stick that on for six points, nice and cheap. A bit of anti-tank ability there as well. It's just lots of shooting ability. The heavy bolters are 10 points each, that hasn't changed. The Twin Assault Cannon is 44 points, it's 144 points, 
Uh, then 1452 then if you add in 152, 672 that's if you've got your two heavy bolters uh, storm bolter, hunter killer ok so I, I do like that but the, the battle predators, you know, it's a unique blood angels vehicle so I, I've tried to include them in the list so I do like those they just they look great. It's like it, you know, Bow Predator, oh that's a Blood Angels vehicle, it's you know uniquely associated with them, that's why I like the idea of taking unique units. We've got access to usual stuff here. Hunters, stalkers, uh, whirlwinds all available. Um, for them. Vindicator, Land Raider, Land Raider Crusader, Land Raider Redeemer, Rhino, Razorback. So you're onto transports here. Razorback's a cheaper option if you don't want to go for the Bow Predator, you take a Razorback. And then here you can take uh, Twin Assault Cannon, it's the same weapon, just add that in, and then you can take your Hunter Killer, and you can take your uh, Storm Bolt as well, so you virtually take this here instead of a Belt Predator. Yep. Let's just have a little, I'm sure a lot of people are interested in the comparison, so let's just have a look here. So it raises back 70 points instead of 100, so you save 30. Um, and you're not having to power up the heavy bolters, but you're losing that firepower. So it's, it's 30 points less, basically. Um, and for that, you're losing the wound. Because you drop down to 10 wounds. And that's it. And you lose the ability to take heavy bolters. But no, it's a bit of a bargain, really. But then you're gaining the transport a bit, uh, ability. So Razorbacks with twin assault cannons, hunter killer missile, storm bolter. I go for that. It's definitely an option. Definitely an option. So that's a, a good combo to go there as well. Yep. Uh, drop pods available here. Land speed of storm. Let's have a look here. This can transport ten blood angels. Ten blood, ten blood angels infantry units. That's why I sort of prefer. Eight man units, you can then drop a character in there. Cannot transport jump pack, terminator, or primary models. And no dreadnoughts. So that option's gone. Land speed of storm rep uh, repulsor just there. Stormhawk intercept, you can take the blind just now. It's a nice bit of air support you can add into them. And I imagine that look really nice painted up uh, for blind angels as well. So, so great options available for these. So the codex isn't tight, you've got access to loads of stuff. Plus all the unique Blood Angels units. Storm Raven Gunship, I love this for Blood Angels, nice. Uh, assault vehicle, heavily armed. Nice uh, vehicle for softening up the opponent and then you deliver your uh, Blood Angels infantry unit payload. And Dreadnought, see, because Blood Angels, Blood Angels have some really nice Dreadnought, so you, your ability to carry that around the battlefield as well. So, I mean, you take a a, a deaf company, one of these, paint it up in the deaf company markings, but a deaf company dreadnoughts, a deaf company inside, and a chaplain. Fantastic theme, really nice. Usual Space Marine rolls, not going to go through all of it here, but it's just a flying land raider. It really is good, 14 wounds. Um, and the combo I usually go for is sort of heavy weapon, heavy weaponry for killing vehicles. So you've got Storm Strike missiles, which are nasty, twin las cannon. Twin multi mount is what I usually go for. And that's enough to bring down most vehicles. Ah, look at that, the storm talent as well. So you get access to everything. Really good. So, great improvement here for blind angels. Yep. No, very, very good indeed. So, they've got access to loads of stuff. And we've seen some nice points reductions here. No, it's some really good ones, especially this, the. I was going to say Sanguinary Guard, but it's the Inferno Pistol, which you can give to multiple units. It's going to benefit Death Company as well, um, so that's all good. And some nice rolls, I mean, it's all good so far, so excellent use here for the Blood Angels. Hopefully we'll, we'll see Blood Angels Army starting to do better here. I get an idea when I get this new list. I don't think it's really going to affect my list that I've proposed on the Plus channel. I don't think. The only thing it's going to do is free up some points, which is nice. Some points to play with, add in some extras. So uh, that's the armory. We've covered the unique weapons really. So Blood Angels in here. Yep. 
Yep, melee weapons. Nice spread here, now you've got this mix of... Uh, and the fluff here covers how uh, Blood Angels have reacted to the primary brains and obviously they're getting on fine <laughs> because they mix it with each other. No problem at all. Yeah, I'm still happy to be doing a separate Primaris list. Because I, I don't want to have, like, so I've got Blood Angels collection, I don't want to start kicking out units and then replacing the Primaris. I'd be really sad to do that, so I'm trying to keep it open for regular Blood Angels. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, Defenders of Humanity, so that's your objective secured there. That applies to all the factions now. The Red First. In any turn in which a unit of this ability charged, was charged, or made a heroic intervention, you may add one to its wound rolls in the fight phase. Yeah, so with this rule here, um, it's not listed in the unit entries. It's here. If your army is battle forged, troops uh, gain defenders of humanity, that's securing your objectives. And then here, in addition, infantry, bikers, and dragnauts in Blood Angels units. Blood Angels Detachments and Blood Angels Successor Chapter Detachments gain Red First. And here is your Red First. It's plus one to your wound rolls, which is a massive bonus for Blood Angels. I mean, with that single sentence here, Blood Angels have received a massive bonus. Yeah. Plus one to wound is incredible. It really is. I mean, you've got sanguinary. I'm thinking sanguinary guard charging against a vehicle, fives to wind. All of a sudden, that's plus one added to that. Uh, you, you're charging against uh, an infantry squad with your power swords. Death company charge in. Freeze to wind becomes twos to wind. Yeah. So the whole emphasis is on the charge, blistering on the charge, because you remember you've got your black rage extra attack and then plus one your wounds all of a sudden you combo those together really really deadly or you've got your your, your thunder hammers and you, you're re-rolling your hits you get a load of hits against the vehicle freeze to wound usually you drop out a couple of those wounds come through all of a sudden twos to wound ouch it's a massive bonus there and it adds in the, the fear it should be a it should be a scary thing in a game to be charged by Blood Angels, that's how it's meant to be. So the whole emphasis is on it, and it's, it's pushing you towards making an assault based charge, charge into the enemy based army, which is how it should be for Blood Angels. That was the kind of list I wanted to go for. So, yes, you can take your heavy firepower, but it's kind of steering you away from playing them like 10 man tactical squads inside rhinos and predators, and that kind of play as a regular space brain. You, you, this is pushing you towards getting into the assault play aggressively and then you get brilliant bonuses for doing it but it's all got to be based on the charge the charge is where the impact is made so you're looking to build units that uh, are, well, are well equipped you charge them in and then they, they, they decimate the opponent and then they you then build them to have to absorb damage coming back so you have some spare models around with no upgrades they die uh, when your opponent fires back with weakened force and then you charge again Still, you've got your main uh, weaponry, close combat attacks, and so on, preserved in that. So that's the kind of idea: is to charge, do damage, weather the storm, do damage again. And usually, you're at that stage, you're kind of winning the game. Should be, and should be a mopping up action. That's the kind of build I'm sort of aiming for uh, with them. So that's that. Red first, massive bonus. I uh, would we'll cover. Uh, stratagems next. This will be fascinating to see what kind of enhancements you can get. But it is all good news so far for Blind Angels. This is all good. Very, very good indeed. So, uh, Armoury of Bow, one command point or three command points to just get your extra relics, which we'll take a look at later on. Two command points for Forlorn Fury. Use this stratagem at the start of the first battle round before the first turn has begun. You can immediately move one of your Death Company infantry units and can even advance as if it was your movement phase. You can only use this stratagem once. It's only one unit, but that's a nice bonus there. You're trying to get in that turn one charge, perhaps. You know, you move them, advance them before the game even starts. <laughs> All of a sudden, uh, they're making a quick dash. 
helpful, tactically very helpful. Behold the golden host, that's one command point. Use this stress immediately after a blood angels unit from your army with the death mask ability is set up on the battlefield. To the start of your next turn, the range of that death mask ability is increased to 12. Ugh, I wouldn't bother with that one. Uh, all spec scan, uh, two command points. Use this strategy immediately after your opponent sets up a unit that's arriving in the battlefield. I think some of these are similar to the regular Space Marine. Um, set up within 12 of one of your Blood Angels infantry units. You can immediately shoot, but it's minus one to hit. Okay, that's help very helpful if you're caught out in an ambush. Uh, Death Visions of Sanguinius, one command point. Use this stratagem when mustering your army. Select a Blood Angels captain, chaplain, or lieutenant from your army other than Primaris models and named characters. This model gains the Death Company keyword and Black Rage the duration of the battle. Ooh. So. Nice. That's really good. Yep, no, that's really good. So, for example, uh, a regular chaplain, you painted him up for Blood Angels, you can pay the command point and you've made him a Blood Angels chaplain. Or a Death Company chaplain, because he then gains Death Company keyword and Black Rage. Nice, that's really good. Wisdom of the Ancients, one command point. Use the strategy at the start of any phase, select Blood Angels Dreadnought from your army until the end of the phase, you can roll hit rolls of one. Blood Angels units have been six of that Dreadnought. Nice, like a librarian Dreadnought nearby. Giving bonuses to units. Just there, so that's good. Strike of the Archangels. Two command points. Use this strategy immediately after Blood Angels terminate a unit from your army is set up on the battlefield. You can reroll failed hit rolls to that unit until the start of your next turn. It's helpful for shooting in combat. Nice. Okay. Uh, tactical flexibility. One command point. Use this strategy at the start of your movement phase. Select a Blood Angels unit from your army within. Uh, with the combat squad's ability, you can then split it. Right, okay, usual Space Marine. Two more pages, yeah, two full pages of uh, stratagems here. Cluster Mines. This is for Scout Bikes. Select an enemy unit of an inch before it moves, or D6 on 2+, plus. it's D3 mortal wounds. Nasty enough, that one. But you've got to run that specific unit. Upon Wings of Fire, one command point, use the stratagem in your movement phase before moving a Blood Angels jump pack unit from your army. Remove the unit from the battlefield and set it up at the end of that phase anywhere on the battlefield that's more than nine inches away from any models. Brilliant. Fantastic one, that one. Really good. So, you got your Death Company uh, unit with jump packs. They've done some combats, but they're a bit out of shape, away from the opponent somewhere. Play that command point and stick them anywhere on the battlefield. Excellent, it's only one point to do it. Very, very, very helpful objective grabbing. Excellent. So you really catch the opponent out with that one. That one's really good. Uh, orbital bombardment. That's uh, three command points. It's once per battle. In your shooting phase, that three command points, I, I reckon my list is not gonna have many command points. So each of these, whenever they're used, it's gonna have to be like a, yeah, so that's a hefty amount of command points. I suppose most Blood Angel players aren't gonna have many points to play with, but it's there if you need it. It's, uh, it can be used once per battle in your shooting phase. If you had a Blood Angel's Warlord that did not move, instead of shooting with their weapon, select a point on the battlefield. A raw d6 for each unit of d6. Minus one if you're trying to hit a character. On a four plus, it's d3 mortal wounds. It is nasty enough, especially if like a clustered gun line or something. It's nasty enough. Masterful marksmanship. Use the stratagem when a Blood Angels Stone Guard veteran squad from your army is attacked, or selected to attack in your shooting phase. You can add one to all wound rolls made for that unit's special issue bulk gun attacks. Cool. Data link telemetry, one command point. Use the stratagem when a blind angel's whirlwind from your army is selected to attack in your shooting phase. If the target of the whirlwind shooting attacks are visible to friendly blind angels, land speeder unit. Oh, there's that uh, interlink going on there. Uh, it is within 12, the target unit, the whirlwind's attacks automatically hit. Nice. It's 
not a combo that I would play for, for Blood Angels at least. Lucifer Pattern Engines. Use a stratagem before advancing with a Blood Angels vehicle, other than a Dreadnought, or vehicles that can fly from your army. Increase its move characteristic by 6, or d6 plus 6 if it's a Bow Predator, until the end of the phase. Do not roll a dice. Nice. Bit of speed. There's only a point to do it. Need to get somewhere quick. Play the card. It's a good one. Empiric Channeling. One command point. Use the stratagem at the start of your psychic phase. The Blood Angels Psyker from your army is within six of at least two other Blood Angels Psykers. The Psyker can immediately attempt to manifest one additional psychic power this turn. When attempting to manifest this power, you can add two to the psychic test. Brilliant. Wow. Very good. So you get the extra power. And more likely to go off as well. Nice. Cool, we need the two nearby each other for that to work. Kill shots available here. This has been played against me a number of times by James with his ultramarines and his predators. Use a stratagem in shooting phase if a predator, so it can be any type of predator, it could be a, I'm presuming a bow predator as well. Three more armies have been six of two other friendly blind predators. If you do so, add one to the wound rolls <gasps> and damage for all the predators attacks that target monsters or vehicles. Utterly, it's such a deadly card, and it's one command point, it's a bit of... It's an absolute bargain, that. So let me get this straight. Um, let's just check this, because I'm sure some people will be asking the question. You may have guessed what I'm going to check here. Predator. Bow Predator. Yes, it's here. Look, keywords. Bow predator is vehicle, predator, bow predator. So that gets it. So you have three bow predators. Yep. So <laughs> suddenly you've got an anti tank with your bow predators. You can have three bow predators equipped with their uh, twin assault cannons. You could target a vehicle or a monster, and you'd suddenly become strength six, say, wound on fives against a vehicle. But then you get plus one to your wound roll, so it'd be fours. And then your damage, instead of damage one, it's damage two. Suddenly you're hosing down vehicles and monsters for a command point. It's brilliant. Yep. And you don't even nominate an enemy target, so you don't say, right, I'm going to play this card against that monster or this vehicle. It's you just get it, whatever you fire against. Add one to the wound rolls and damage all the predator's attacks that target monsters or vehicles. Yeah, it's anything you want. It's utterly deadly. And it's in this codex. So that's, there's some great ones here. Very, very powerful ones. So Blood Angels have taken a massive boost here. Which is what we were hoping for. They, I can't fault the codexes, you know, for, for Games Workshop. They're, they're levelling everything up. Uh, they're fixing all of the issues that people are, they're listening to what people are saying, they're fixing all the issues and making all of the factions, you know, vi viable, usable, you know, that, it makes business sense for them to do it. They're not going to have factions that people neglect and no one collects because they're rubbish because that's not good sales techniques. You want everything sort of on a level so you could pick whatever you want to collect and you can make a decent army out of any of the factions and it's great, it's great for... Uh, having variety as well, so it's, it's good. So, uh, kill shot's fantastic. Line break of bombardment, that's your combination when you fire your Vindicators, use your rolls uh, for that. Hellfire shells, that's your D3 mortal wounds. Uh, when an infantry unit fires heavy bolter, if you hit, it's D3 mortal wounds. Nice, any command points. Very, very good indeed. Yeah, no, it's utterly, it's, it's utterly deadly because you could fire at a vehicle. All you've got to do is hit. And you don't even roll to wound. So Hellfire Shells is great. Yeah, and no, it's all nice, nasty enough. Hellfire Shells is a good one. It really is good. Descent of Angels right now. Two command points. It is two points to do it. Use the stratagem before making a charge roll of a Blood Angels jump pack unit from your army that was set up on the battlefield earlier in this turn. Roll 3d6 to determine the charge range instead of 2d6. It's a massive bonus. Especially you've got that unique unit, uh, that elite unit that's moved in. 
or landed in, you've got to get that charge off. It's so important. You're not going to use it for every time, uh, but there might be that cr critical point in the game. You're going to use your two command points to give you 3d6. You know, your average charge is going to be about 10 inches. So it's just increasing the odds of you getting that charge. And then you've got your command, you've got your command reroll and standby as well. So you combine that together and it means you should get the charge off. And it's unique to them. This isn't available for other Space Marine uh, codexes and chapters. So it's good they put it into Center Angels. Red Rampage, one command point. Use this stratagem in any fight phase. Add D3 to the attack's characteristic of Blood Angel's character. Nice. From your army that charged earlier in the turn, the duration of the fight phase. So you Sanguinor charges in D3 extra attacks. Brilliant. It's only a point to do it. Armor of Contempt, one command point. Use this stratagem in a Blood Angel's vehicle if your army suffers mortal wound on a D6. And for each other mortal wound, it's a 5 plus, ignore it. Nice. So. You know, you think your opponent's going to smite one of your vehicles to death. You could play that. It's only a command point. It's going to negate a lot of that damage coming through. Uh, flak missile. It's D3 mortal wounds to uh, a flyer. If you shoot them with a missile launcher, with an infantry unit. Vengeance for a Sanguinius is one command point. Use the stratagem and a blind draws unit for your army is chosen to attack in the fight phase. Each turn roll of a six, uh, you get. Uh, if it was targeting Heretic Astartes unit, immediately make an extra attack. Generate extra attacks on a 4 plus when fighting Black Legion. Whoa, some, some hatred between them. Nice, only one command point. But you're neat if you're fighting against Heretic Astartes or Black Legion. Honor the chapter, three command points. Yes, yeah, is nice. Again, you've got that really nice um, elite unit. You know, Fighting away, you want to make good use of them. You get to fight again for blind infantry or bikers from your army. That unit can immediately fight for a second time. Exceptionally powerful. Then only in death does duty end. Two command points. That character is slain. The model summons the strength for one final attack and can immediately, can immediately either shoot as if it was the shooting phase or fight as if it were the fight phase. Yep. So there's some. A lot of the strong Space Marine ones are in here, and then some great ones for Blue Angels. These are all, well, they're somewhat I wouldn't bother with, a waste of time. Um, but there's some others that are fantastic. So, really good. Very, very good indeed. Right, so all our traits then. Okay. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Which of these? Would you choose now? The name characters have some fixed here: Ashtraf, Corbelo, Tycho, and Sol. They all have these fixed. I take the Sanguinor. He's forced to take heroic bearing. Uh, so you could play it like a secondary character, unnamed character could be a warlord, and you can choose what you want. If these are fantastic, but we'll see. Um, speed of the Primarch. Then you can always choose your warlord to fight first in the fight phase, even if you didn't charge. If the enemy has units that have charged or has a similar ability, then alternate choosing units to fight with, starting with the player whose turn is taking place. So yeah, that's pretty good. Mephiston gets that. Interesting. Artisan of War, add one to the damage characteristic of one weapon carried by your warlord. Note that weapon cannot be a relic of battle. Who has that? None of these characters. Soul Warden. You can attempt to resist one psychic power with your Warlord, or attempt to resist one additional psychic power if you already is able to do so in each of your opponent's psychic phases. Lamartis has that. So does Astaraf. Nice. Mm, pretty good. Helpful. You know, that Smite's coming in. You can try and resist it with a character you couldn't usually do that with. Pretty good. Heroic Bearing. Right, it's this for the Sanguinol. And Dante has this as well. For any Blood Angels units, automatically pass morale. Nice, okay. So auto pass. Cool. Uh, Gift of Foresight is given to Corbelo. Or a d6 each time your Warlord loses a wound. On all of all, uh, re rerolling once. On a 6, the wound is ignored, no effect. If your Warlord has Black Rage, then instead ignore wounds on a 5 or a 6. But ignore wounds from the Black Rage. Uh, 
but the similar ability to ignore wounds from black rage has no effect. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, Corbulon has that. Selfless Valor. Your warlord can perform a heroic intervention if he is within six instead of three inches. And he can move up to six instead of three. Selfless Valor. And that's Captain Tycho. And Gabriel Seth. All right, helpful for him. It's a nice one for Seth. So, yeah, they're all okay. They're not bad, yeah. Not bad. Auto pass them then for the Sanguine. The one that would affect me the most. So, relics here. You don't have to give this to your warlord. It can be to a character. So, you, here you could take uh, your, your named character and then you've got your second HQ and you give them one of these relics. Uh, here, potentially. So, Hammer of Bout. It's Thunder Hammer. It's times two strength. AP minus three in free damage. Okay. Um. Ah, oh, right. I just wonder what the difference was. <laughs> There's no minus one to hit, so. So, that's cool, actually. What you could do, for example, is take a... Uh, a captain. Equip him with a thunder hammer. Uh, he's at twos to hit. You give him this relic here, and then he remains at twos to hit with that thunder hammer. So that's nice. That's helpful. Angel's wing. It's a free upgrade. So angel's wing. Then jump pack model only. You can reroll foul charge rolls for a model equipped with angel's wing, and your opponent cannot fire Overwatch. God, <laughs> that's brilliant. That is exceptionally good. Very, very good. Veritas uh, vitae. If your army is battle forged and the bearer is on the battlefield, roll d6 each time you use a stratagem on a 5 plus you gain a combat po command point. That is excellent. That is so, so good. So, you know, just stick that in your, in your second HQ. Cheap HQ, 5 plus you get your, trait, uh, your command points back. And again, it's very helpful because expecting uh, command points usually to be quite low for Blood Angels. It's very unlikely you're going to field a, a brigade with these and then this fantastic uh, stratagems to use. So five pluses you're going to regain a couple of them during the game which is excellent. So I reckon I re really like this one here. That one's really good. It keeps getting better and better <laughs> for Blood Angels. Uh, Galleon Staff Okay, so if you're going for a, a, a force stave, you've got a librarian in your army, for example. You then take this one, it says here it's plus two strength, AP minus one, D3 damage. You have one to the bearer's psychic test when attempting to manifest smite. That's fantastic, really good. So you've got a nice, reliable smite being uh, used each turn, so that's really good. Archangel's Shard, these are all excellent. These are all brilliant relics. The Archangel's Shard, model of a sword, power sword or mastercrafted power sword only. An Archangel's Shard replaces the weapon. AP minus 3 and 1 damage. If the target is a monster, the weapon has damage D3. If the target is a demon monster, it's D6 damage. Nice. Oh god, D6 damage. Unbelievable. Some free upgrade that is. Wow. Standard of Sacrifice, ancient model only. Ah, interesting. The bearer of the Standard of Sacrifice gains the following ability in addition to those described on their data sheet. Roll d6 each time. Blood Angels Infantry or Blood Angels Bike. Model within six of the bearer loses a wound and a five plus the wound is ignored and has no effect. Models of Black Rage ability are not affected. That all of a sudden makes the uh, Sanguinary Ancient. Ah, no, no, no. Ancient model only. Mm. I wonder if it affects well apparently it does correct me if I'm wrong here but the key words character infantry ancient jump pack fly and sanguinary guard so ancient ancient model only presumed that does include him yep so you can take the banner, which is okay. Definitely take the relic and all of a sudden five plus to ignore wounds. Yep. So that's pretty good. That makes that banner still expensive though, but that's a, a major boost. 
So if you, if you do go for the ancient, I'd say to you, you've got to take the relic here, standard of sacrifice, to make the points worthwhile. Just there. Those relics are all fantastic. They are excellent relics there for the blind as well, worth choosing a decent one of them. Okay. Sanguinary Discipline, are these psychic powers any good? So you've got Smite there. Quickening uh, here. Quickening is warp charge value of 7. If manifested, add 3 to advance and charge rolls you make for the Psyker. Make D3 additional attacks with them in the fight phase until the start of your next turn. So if your Psyker's really good, then take Quickening. Now, yeah, so I take it it's for any Psyker, so you can give it to your Librarian Dreadnought. Nice. Yeah. So that's good enough. It's only for that unit though, it's not an enhancement to give another unit. Which might, would, might I reckon would be more deadly. But it's still nice enough, so it's worth having a a, a, uh, a well-equipped Psyker. Mephiston, um, Librarian Dragon or something like that. Unleash Rage, has a warp charge value of 6. If manifested, select a Blood Angels Infantry Unit of 12. To the start of your next phase, you get an extra attack. Okay, at least rage isn't bad. Yeah, these are okay. Shield of Sanguinius is a 5 plus invul. It's warp charge value of 6. It's Blood Angels unit, so it could be anything you want. Okay, not bad. Blood Boil. It's warp charge value of 9. Yeah, I mean, Shield of Sanguinius, that's helpful enough. I mean, there's a lot of Blood Angels units that don't really have invul saves. Like Sanguinary Guard, Death Company, and so on. So that would really help out a large unit of those. Blood Boil. So warp charge value of six. If manifest is select a visible enemy unit within six inches and of the cycle roll two d six. If the total exceeds the highest toughness characteristic in the target unit, the unit suffers D three mortal wounds. Against infantry and characters, you're going to do that most of the time. Half a chance against vehicles. If the total rolled is more than double, it's a straight three mortal wounds. Yep. So that work well against toughness three or four. There's a fair chance of doing that. Okay. Blood Lance. Warp charge value of six. Select a visible enemy model within twelve and draw a line of sight between them and the cycle or D six for each model the centre of the line passes over each row of a five plus the model model's unit suffers a mortal wound. It's okay, you're gonna cause a, a few wounds with that. Oh, but it's 5 plus though. So it's quite weak that one. It is quite weak. Yeah. Be deadlier if. It would be horrific if it was um, each unit you pass through inflicts D3 mortal wounds. So you pass over a vehicle, it's D3 mortal wounds. And pass over a unit, it's D3 mortal wounds. But it's not, it's 5 plus. So it passes over a vehicle, it's just a 5 plus roll for one mortal wound. So it's very weak that one. Um, Wings of Sanguinius. It's a warp charge value of 5. If manifested, the Psyker can immediately move as if it was the movement phase. But his movement characteristic is also increased to 12 inches and he gains fly until the start of the next Psychic phase. This means he can shoot if he fell back, yep, yeah, because he becomes fly. Yeah. In addition, whilst the power is in effect, you can reroll foul charge rolls for the Psyker. So, yeah, it makes him very, very quick on the move there. Um. So I can take it, you can play this on a Dreadnought, oh dear. <laughs> a Dreadnought flying across the table, I don't think I could have the heart to do that, but looks like you can. So, yeah, th those are, I say Blood Lance is the weakest, but a lot of these are very good. Yeah, they're all very good. No, Blood Boil's pretty nasty. It's like you top up to Smite, so you play Smite, play Blood Boil, you stack them on top of each other. Yeah, so they're all pretty good. No, they're all not too bad at all. You know, and there's, there's oh, and, and a lot of the psychers for the angels are decent in combat and other abilities anyway. So these, these are just bonuses and they're decent enough. So I would say go for a combat strong enough psyker uh, like Mephiston or Librarian Dreadnought. Uh, and then you've got all this here as well. So that's, that's very good indeed. So you've got tactical objectives just there. Uh, for those, and then your points costs. 
uh, covered all them. So that is the review there for the new brand new Blood Angels Codex. So uh, just to mention again, I've got mine from Games Workshop. They've sent me a copy early, uh, but I usually get mine at Games Workshop. Uh, models and codexes and so on from gamingfigures.com you can check them out just means you get things like codexes at a discounted rate uh, so that's gamingfigures.com uh, leave your comments and feedback whether you think this is the improvement have they gone all the way and improved these as much as they should have done uh, it'd be interesting to hear that especially if you're a Blood Angels player and you've been with Blood Angels for a while uh, I think it's a massive enhancement here it seems that every faction that gets their codex uh, everything's being boosted up to the next level um, and I think they've done it here with Blood Angels. There's some great uh, bonuses here, some fantastic stratagems. Uh, some of the faction rules, uh, Black Rage, Red First, are superb. Um, so the relics are fantastic, and some points reductions as well. So I think it's a win-win situation here for Blood Angels. Is it enough to make them one of the top level armies again. Back in the day they used to. Blood Angels armies were rock solid, you know, super elite, kill anything they touched, but now they've taken a few knocks, uh, become expensive, they've been a neglected codex, usually it's regular Space Marine codexes coming out, Blood Angels neglected, waiting for codexes to come along, but now they've got the brand new one here for 8th edition, it seems like they've been enhanced. Could this be the resurgence of the Blood Angels? But it'll be interesting to see how my own list does, and uh, my own Blood Angels army performs in the future. So what to expect with them, uh, currently working on, currently painting up some new units to finish off this list. I've got a couple left to finish uh, and then this new list will be ready. You can check out that brand new list, some pretty big changes have happened. You can leave your own comments and feedback and suggestions, that's over on the Plus channel. Uh, and then you can keep a look out for some tactics videos coming out on the regular channel. And then uh, once the army's complete, a showcase video as well uh, once down quite a bit down the line once this army's uh, completely finished and then some battle reports on both of the channels uh, battle reports on the plus channel and over on the regular channel as well and we'll see how well the blood angels do and see how well this new proposed list performs in the future as well but leave your comments and feedback um, what you think the, the best uh, Results are here, uh, things have changed, uh, stratagems and so on, deadly combos that you've found that work really well, leave that there and share your experience. Other Blood Angels players can share their information as well and uh, for people wanting to get into collecting Blood Angels then they can see that information and pick up some hints and tips as well uh, from those of you that are uh, veteran Blood Angel players. But I, I love my uh, army, just such a bright colourful gold and red and hopefully they will uh, be a tough army to use in the future so there it is that's the review of 8th edition blood angels codex thanks for watching keep a look out for more reviews on the channel and tune in next time